going on, everybody? Welcome back. In this video, we are looking at the NBA slate for Friday. It's already Friday. The week went by super quickly, this one. We're soon going to be into spring, and the good news we got yesterday is that baseball is coming back. Uh, so we won't have to wait too much longer. It's about a month, less than a month away. So we'll have some stuff coming out about the baseball season. Um, but we'll go ahead and talk about this NBA slate. As always, if you enjoy the videos, appreciate it. Hit the like button, subscribe if you haven't already. Low scoring day yesterday, the Sixers disappointed. Uh, so we're still able to hit in cash games on DraftKings. FanDuel fell short. But if you wanted to join for the website, you can check that out in the description. Check out Price Picks. You can use my code for some free money. Twitter for updates. And check out the Discord if you're into sports betting. And like I said, I'll have some baseball stuff probably over the weekend if you wanted to join for that. Let's go ahead and get into today's slate. Ten games. We have one team very banged up, and that is the Pelicans. They get a dream matchup against Charlotte, and they're missing their best two guys. No CJ McCollum and no Brandon Ingram today. So we're going to get a lot of value from the Pelicans. We'll get to them. We have a ton of studs at the point guard position. Luka, DeJounte Murray, John Morant, Trey Young. I kind of prefer the top two guys over John Morant and Trey Young. Uh, Murray gives you triple-double upside every game. The matchup isn't easy, but he did have a triple-double earlier against Utah. At least he's at home. It will be a different story if he was traveling to Utah. So there is a benefit. And then Luka just gets a great matchup against Houston, who plays no defense. They got blown out by... The Knicks, so it wasn't even like a game that um, I'm going to put too much stock into. He just didn't. None of his teammates besides Luka could hit shots, so he only put up 77. Luka counted for almost 40% of his team's points. Going with some value here, Devin Booker at 89 looks great. He came right back and almost had a triple-double against Miami in the win without Jimmy Butler. Looks awesome today. We've seen what he's done this year without Chris Paul. Gives you 50, 60-point upside pretty routinely without Chris Paul the price tag isn't overwhelming and the matchup is fine against Toronto at home LaMelo Ball he's been more riskier recently just because the minutes aren't always there uh, the minutes have been down for some reason some of these games have been blowouts and for some reason the Hornets are typically involved in a lot of blowouts but they're going up against a Pelicans team that's super banged up so it should be a close one but I would prefer Devin Booker to LaMelo Ball and then Reggie Jackson has had a couple of big games, but his price tag has come way up at 84. It's tough to pay that much for him. In the 6K range, you have Kevin Porter looks fine at 68, even though his price tag has jumped up. He looks better if there's no Christian Wood. If Wood is in, then if Wood and Tate are in, then I don't think I'll get to him. Even if they're out, it's still kind of tough to get to at that price tag. Brunson is 62. He looks fine, but nothing, nothing crazy because I'd rather try to prioritize Luka if I could. Going with some of the value here, Jalen Suggs is only $5,200. He looks good, even though yeah, like he's been in foul trouble some of these games. He only got 20 minutes for some reason, but he still gives you upside. Like, he's risky for cash and just because uh, they have a lot of other point guards right now and Fultz is back, but the price tag is good enough for tournaments. The 4K range, Devontae Graham looks like one of the good values right now. I think he'll start. Even if he doesn't start, he's going to get you like 30 minutes off the bench because they don't have too many other guys that will take a lot of shots. You know, they're going to be starting the two centers, Hayes and Valanchunas. Herb Jones is a good defender, doesn't take a lot of shots. And you know, CJ was, was taking a lot of shots without Ingram. So they're going to need somebody else to step up. It's probably going to be Devontae Graham, even if he doesn't start. But I think he will. At shooting guard, go ahead and put in Devin Booker at 89. The price tag is you know, not even that expensive without... Chris Paul, he got some less minutes because they, they won by over 20. So he could have got like 37, 38 minutes. Looked great. I mean, he wasn't dealing with an injury. He was just dealing with sitting out for COVID protocols. So love Devin Burker at $8,900. Second guy would be Donovan Mitchell at 86. You could also go to Fred Van Fleet at 82. He's um, come back. Looks like his knee is fine, hopefully. We haven't heard that he's bothering him. Just, just typically, it's pretty consistent getting you in the 40s, in the 50s sometimes in the 30s, but you know, the price tag is good enough that I don't mind him. In the 7K range, not too much that looks that appealing besides, like, you could look to uh, D'Angelo Russell if there is no Anthony Edwards. 6K range, I like Desmond Bain. He's been hot recently. Like I mentioned, he's been on a cold streak earlier in the week, and now he's been hot the last couple of games, so probably stick with him if you wanted to go with a guy that's been on fire. Yeah, 55 for Alec Burks, starting at point guard looks okay. And then uh, you also have Amir Coffey as a value pick here. He's like $3,800. He looks good if you wanted to get to a value. Got 25 minutes, 
probably going to play like 25 to 30 plus minutes here. Uh, there is no Covington, so that's just one last piece in that rotation. And he, I th uh, think he started in place of Mann. So uh, if he's starting, then just a couple of extra minutes. Yeah, he started against Washington. If they continue to start him, then you know, feel good about his minutes. Small forward, Jimmy Butler once again has a Q tag. Uh, hopefully he plays dealing with an illness. I assume he was going to play. If he does, you could play him against Cleveland, but I don't think you need to. He's been not that... Um, he's had a couple of decent games, but he's also had a couple of really bad games that have killed me if you played him. I like Desmond Bain right here in the mid-range, 66. 5K range, you can go with Morris if you wanted to, but his price tag has kind of come up a little bit at 57 after his big game yesterday or two days ago. Uh, other guys at small forward, look to Herb Jones as a value at 48. He's probably going to play over 30 minutes here. He fouled out last game, just 27 minutes. Against Charlotte, it is a good matchup to rack up some defensive stats, and they should be able to put up some points here, even though they're missing their primary scores. I'm going to go ahead and put in Coffee as a value, just to free myself up to pay up for some studs, and I think he's a good value right now. Power 40 of LeBron is almost 12K. They lost once again to uh, a poor team, and that was Houston Rockets. He's at home against Washington. He's a late-night hammer. He's almost 12K. I prefer Luka, but LeBron would be second. Other guys would be uh, not too interested in Siakam or Kyle Kuzma. Maybe Julius Randle, cause just because he gives you that ceiling, but he's like a GPP play. I think you can go with Evan Mobley now that he's starting at center without Jared Allen. Just a lot more rebounding. Allen was taking a lot of rebounds, and you should get more minutes now just because, especially against Miami, the only other alternatives are like Kevin Love, who is much more of like a stretch four. He can play center at times, but I don't know if they want to put him on BAM. I think they'd rather put Mobley in there for as much as they could. Mobley and like Dean Wade are like the centers that other guys that they can look to to play big. And they also have like Ed Davis, but he's you know, he's not really a factor at this stage of his NBA life. 6K range here, we have Jaron Jackson. He always gives you upside. He's super risky though, just because of the fouls. Sangoon, if he starts, if there is no, Christian Wood would be a decent play. Uh, Bagley, 55. He let a lot of people down. He's going up against Boston, a good defensive team. He's fine, but I don't know. If he's popular again, then you can jump off. Hayes at 47 looks good. And then, yeah, that's basically the main pieces. You can maybe look to, like, Kleber or Hachimura. It's just, like, GPP plays. as value picks or maybe, like, Najee Marshall is going to get some run. Over at center, you have LeBron for some reason is after just being small forward eligible. Now they've now changed his position to power forward center, but I'm not playing LeBron at center. Cat uh, is kind of expensive. He looks better if there's no Edwards, but still I don't know if he's like a mu he's not a must play. I'd much rather get down to Valanciunas at 78. He should just destroy this front court. He should be looking back like he was earlier in the season when Ingram was out and they didn't have McCollum just in terms of getting usage. Would it be shocked if he puts up another monster game like he did last game against Orlando against this uh, pretty undersized Charlotte front court? Besides Mason Plumley, you know Harrell's undersized, um, so should have some success there. And then moving over to the guard position, another guy that you could plug in from the Pelicans is like Alvarado should get some good run. If you wanted to go with another cheap guy at 31, wouldn't be surprised if he draws the start. But I'm going to go ahead and put in, um, I think, Desmond Bain as just a, a value pick here at 66. A guy that's been shooting the ball really well. Didn't even get a ton of minutes because they got uh, they were in a blowout. But he's starting to play better last few games compared to he was in a bit of a cold stretch before that. Going up against the Knicks at home. I mean, they should put up points anyways. Just shot two of, or just shot four of 18 earlier against them still put up 33 because he had a good game with rebounds and got you some defensive stats but as of right now i definitely don't mind desmond bain at this price so that's it for DraftKings. let's talk about fanduel all right on fanduel point guard position we're looking at Dejounte murray at his great price tag at 10 8 but luca is cheaper so i can't really get to murray over luca i'd much rather get to Doncic there i like garland's price even though the matchup is tough then you have Van Fleet is only 76. Mitchell is at a good price tag. LaMelo looks good at 75. So you have a lot of cheap plays here. 6K range, you can even look to like Kevin Porter or Campaign. Jalen Green gives you some upside. Right at 6K, you have Cole Anthony. 5K range, Burks 
Mike Conley just because he's going to get some more run potentially without Bogdanovich, more shots at least. Clarkson also gives you some upside. We'll get some more run there. Go ahead and put in Luka Doncic, just really cheap. At shooting guard, I like Devin Booker. A 10-3 is a little bit different than his 89 on DraftKings, so you could go with another value pick here with, like, Mitchell instead of paying. I mean, Mitchell's, like, over $2,000 less. Some of these guys, like Brown, are $3,000 less. So I don't think he's a must-play. Bain is better on DraftKings. Looks okay on, at, on FanDuel at 68. You probably have some other guys that you can look to, like Cole Anthony. Other picks would be Beasley had a great game. If there is no Edwards, you could look to him if you wanted to. Uh, he had like 11 threes last game. Clarkson has a value at 46. Looks good. And go ahead and put in Devontae Graham as a guy that should get, even if he doesn't get the start, he should get a lot of usage and a lot of shots off, off the bench. Small forward. You can definitely get to LeBron. Look to prioritize both Luka and LeBron on FanDuel. The price tags are a lot cheaper than they are on DraftKings. Other picks would be Jalen Brown at 73. You have Kevin Porter at 64. If Edwards plays, you could look to him at 64. His price is very affordable. 6000 for Gary Trent. Looks like a good value. And then we don't know who's going to start in place of Bogdanovich. It could be Daniel House. It could be, it probably will be Daniel House. But we'll wait and see on that news. I don't know if he's a must, but we'll get you some good run as a value pick. 4K range. O'Neal will get some more run, but he's not really much of anything besides a defender and just just a 3 and D guy. I do like Batum's price at 41. Covington was taking minutes away from him, and now that Covington is out, should be looking at more minutes from Nick Batum on a consistent basis until he's back. Uh, power forward, Evan Mobley is 87. That's too pricey. I'd rather get to Bam or Julius Randle cheaper. Siakam is a lot cheaper at 81. Jaron Jackson at 65 looks like a good value, but Porzingis at only 6K is going to be the, the play that I plug in here. Going up against the Lakers, he got up to like 26 minutes last game. Not probably won't get up to 30 yet, but the price tag, you don't need him to get you 30 minutes. He should be able to have success in like 26 to 28. And at center, like price tag on Cat, especially if there's no Edwards. But I'm going to go ahead and put in Valanciunas just because they're missing their best offensive guy. So Valanciunas will step up. We've seen him put up some big games earlier in the season when he was basically the only guy that, you know, when they were missing the other guys with Ingram was out with his knee issues, or, yeah, I think it was knee. Uh, but Valanciunas stepped up nicely in those games, stepped up nicely last game. So, wouldn't expect anything else from Valanciunas going up against Charlotte. Great matchup for these guys. And that's about it for the video. Thank you for watching. Best of luck tonight, and I'll see you all next time.